In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, world. Today is September 13. We are now on the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Gathered together around the table of the Eucharist, we offer to God our prayers of thanksgiving and also our petitions, our needs, our concerns. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and be sorry for them. I confess to Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers, brothers and, sisters, and sisters, that I have I greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, words in, what in what I have, I have done, done and in, in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, I ask Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you. you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our hearts through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Zero. Warth and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sin in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes worth, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days set empty aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the holy highest covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Responsorial psalm, let our response be, the Lord is king and merciful slow to anger and rich in compassion. 
The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Her pardons of all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his word forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. For us the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, and that he might the Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I give you a commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times. Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. And that the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. When the master, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. 
Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once again, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon, world. And we are now on the second Sunday of this month of September. The theme of today's readings is only one word, forgiveness. And it was one of the most difficult themes or subjects in the scripture and for us Christians. It is about God's forgiveness of us and our forgiveness of others. So it comes from God first, God forgiving us, then we in turn in our relationship with others we forgive others, especially those who hurt us. Forgiveness is difficult, if not impossible. But for us Christians, this is a way of life. That means we have to choose. It is not part of our nature. Love is not part, maybe not part of our nature. We are born selfish, and if, even though we are created in the image of God, and yet many times our thinking, our heart, is so far away from that image of God, to become like God in our love for others. Because of our fallen nature, so it's hard for us to love others, especially our enemies and harder still to forgive, especially those who hurt us. That's why this forgiveness as a way of life, as a path that all of us Christians must take, must choose. So the readings today challenge us to walk this path of forgiveness, not alone, but with Jesus who is the only way of life. However, the readings offer us ways to overcome unforgiveness and learn how to forgive others. First is, the way God treats us is the way we should treat others. That is the lesson from the first reading from the book of Sirach. The book of Sirach reflects the thoughts of a Jewish teacher who taught that the way we treat others should reflect the way God treats us. So our relationship with others is a reflection of how we experience God, his love, his mercy, his compassion, his forgiveness to us. And the way we treat others should, should be seen. We are like a mirror. People should see how God treats us, his love for us. That's why in the first reading today, the teacher, Ben Sirach, asked, could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord. So when you are angry towards others, do you expect God is going to heal us? Again, he said, could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins if he refuse, refuses mercy to others? Can he expect his sins to be pardoned by God. And the way and 
they will have to pay a heavy price for their unwillingness to forgive. For God will not be overly forgiving for those who do not forgive others. So the first lesson, the first way to help us learn forgiveness is to know, to experience the way God loves us and forgives us. And then, the way we experience that love and mercy, we should show that to others. We should treat others. The second lesson from the readings today is to overcome selfishness. We should learn to overcome selfishness. So the author in the book of Sirach reminds his readers that those who are forgiving are being selfish. If you do not forgive others, that's a sign. And it shows that you are selfish. You only focus on yourselves, on your pain, on your hurt. In most cases, people would rather be selfish than forgiving. That is the root of our problem the root of the difficulty of forgiving. We choose to be selfish rather than forgiving. They think only of their own hurt and themselves. Paano naman ako? Nasaktan ako. This is not just. Or as the author of the first reading today puts it, wrath and anger are hateful things. Yet the sinner hugs them tight. So the sinner, being selfish, hugs them. The hurt and the pain and the anger. This wrath and anger are negative things, wrongdoings, hateful things, things we should not do as Christians, as children of God. And yet, when we are Selfish, we hug them tight. See the beautiful and penetrating analysis of that Jewish teacher, Ben Sirach. There's a story I would like to, to share with you. Graham Staines, an Australian missionary, along with his family, was working among the socially outcast lepers in the state of Orissa. India. On January 23, 1999, he, along with his two little sons, Philip and Timothy, were brutally burnt alive in their jeep by a group of Hindu fundamentalists. The aftermath of the Gauri incident was nationally televised. What moved us to tears when we watched TV was the sight of Mrs. Mrs. Staines asking Jesus to forgive her husband's murderers. She prayed that Jesus might touch the heart of those men, murderers, so that they might not do to others what they had done to her husband and children. In the brutal murder of Mr. Staines and his children by that group of Hindu fundamentalists, we see the triumph of barbarism, the triumph of hatred, the triumph of anger. But in the forgiveness of Mrs. Staines, we see the triumph of faith and goodness. We see in her forgiveness the triumph of the human spirit touched by Christ. And we see how Mrs. Staines overcame selfishness. She didn't hug tight the hurt, the pain, the anger. Instead, she chose the path of forgiveness. Number three lesson for us from the readings 
is to learn to look beyond ourselves. Look beyond ourselves. The question in the gospel today, in the parable of this master and uh, unforgiving servant is, should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you. It means that servant must look beyond oneself. Some people focus so much on themselves and what they have experienced, the pain, the hurt, the injustice, the loss, they fail to look beyond themselves to the other person or persons involved. It is when we center everything on ourselves and our anger that we fail to see God's actions. We fail to see God loves all of us, including our enemies or even those who hurt us. God loves Sinners, including us and the other person. There's another story I would like to share with you. <clears throat> Ron Lee Davis, in his book, A Forgiving God in This Unforgiving World, tells about a moment when God's remarkable spirit of forgiveness be became real to him. His best friend, Jim, had been hit and killed while riding a motorcycle. The driver of the car was Mr. Smith. And Mr. Smith simply had not seen Jim at the time and hit him and killed him. He was amazed to discover, however, that Jim's family felt only compassion for the man who had accidentally killed their son. So Ron Lee Davis was amazed to know how the family felt only compassion towards Mr. Smith. In fact, the first question they asked when Ron walked through the door was, do you know Mr. Smith? How Mr. Smith is doing? They had been praying for him all night. There are people like that in this world. They forgive those who have done them wrong. And they are called Christians. So, forgiveness can only happen when we look beyond ourselves. We, did not, we need to see how God has, has treated us with mercy and kindness, being slow to anger and rich in compassion. If we focus on how God has touched our lives, we can start to experience what being forgiven really means. And that will lead us to be more understanding of those who have caused us pain and hurt. We need to let go of the pain and hurt that others have caused us and see the person who has sinned against us as needing the kindness and mercy and compassion of God. It is not that only us victims who need God's kindness and mercy, but more so, but more those people who caused us pain and those who hurt us they need God's mercy, kindness, and compassion. And if you look beyond our pains and our hurts, and if you look others and reach out to them, just like the family of, of Jim, they were always thinking of Mr. Smith, how he is doing. They go beyond themselves. Then we can become instruments of forgiveness of God by treating them with similar 
kindness and mercy, the way God treats us. The truth is we are called to condemn evil or wrongdoing in any way, at any cost. We are also called to think beyond our own selves, to see how we can most lovingly bring the message of God's love to others. The question is, did my violent response to those injustices bring about God's message of forgiveness? So when people hurt me, when I am hurt, I fight back, I become violent in my reaction. The question to me is, does it bring about God's message of forgiveness? Do I become an instrument of God's message of forgiveness? Do I proclaim when I respond violently to others? Maybe, yes, human justice, we retaliate, but not as God wants it to be. Fourth, have the same attributes of God. The responsorial psalm today describes some of the attributes of God. Kind and merciful, slow to anger, rich in compassion. God is willing to forgive and treat persons in a caring and compassionate way, especially if they are willing to show the same attributes in their treatment of others. So when we choose to imitate God, imitate Jesus, those attributes I mentioned already, if we are willing to have that, to show that to others, God will help us. And he will help us overcome our anger, our unforgiveness. Go beyond our hurts and pains. Number five, knowing not only who we are, but whose we are. As part of his final summary in his letter to the Romans, Paul reminds them that they are not really their own. So Paul is also telling us right now, modern century Christians, we are not our own. None of us lives for ourselves. And no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for God. And if we die, then we die for the Lord. If we are, then we are the Lord's. We belong to Jesus, whether we are alive or, or, de or dead, as long as we choose, we are with God and for the Lord, then we belong to him. So it's not so much, I am on my own, but I belong to God, I belong to Jesus. If we should live as people of God and we should die as God's people, it will change the way we look at things. It will change our focus. We can go beyond ourselves. It is when we focus our relationship with the Abba Father and Jesus that everything comes into focus. And we can see beyond hurts and pains. And we can see that path of forgiveness, that that is the only path that will overcome hatred, violence, anger. Number six, more than complete. This is the challenge of Jesus for us. In the gospel, St. Peter wants to justify himself as far as his being a good and forgiving person. He asked Jesus if extending forgiveness to someone who has hurt him seven times is enough or more than enough. Because for them, three times is enough. So seven times is more than enough. In fact, it is too much already. But, and we know that the number seven 
is considered the perfect or complete number. So Peter must have this thinking. Seven is the complete. Completeness. When you forgive seven times. It's complete. But the Lord raises it. Raises the bar. To even more perfect. More complete number. When he said. When he answered. To, when he answered Peter. Forgiving another. Must be. 70 times, seven times. So the Lord Jesus, in responding to Peter, is it enough, Lord, to forgive seven times? The Lord raises it to 70 times, seven times. And forgiving for Jesus is going beyond than just being complete. Being complete. Seven times. Go beyond. More perfect. More complete. So one must be willing to forget about the hurt and think about the other person more than oneself. And forgiving, going beyond oneself, going beyond even that is enough or more than enough seven times. Going beyond what is complete. This is the challenge of Jesus. And to help the disciples understand this, going beyond being complete, he gives us a parable of the unforgiving servant. So Jesus relates the parable of the servant who owes his master an exorbitant amount of money. Why the word exorbitant? Huge. He could not pay. The servant who owed is imperfect. We are all imperfect. We cannot pay. We cannot pay God. It is out of this world that huge amount. So when the servant begs for forgiveness, the master writes off, forgotten, erased the debts. But then, this is the problem. When that forgiven servant meets the other servant who owes him a little, not even 10, 20% or 30% of what he owed the master, a little fraction of what he, that servant, fellow servant owed him, that servant forgot what he received from the master. And he choked the servant demanded that the debt will be fully paid. So the other servants heard about this, complained to the master. They were so afraid of that, of that fellow servant who is now furious in demanding to be paid back. Now the justice master changed his mind. Since he is not able to forgive others, fellow servants, the master, the master put him to prison and he canceled, you know, he canceled, he changed his decision before to forgive the servants. And as Jesus concluded the parable, he reminds his followers and all of us that his heavenly father will treat unforgiving individuals the same way as the master treats that unforgiving servant in the story. Yes, it's hard to forgive. That's why we need to continue to pray for right judgment and the willingness to look beyond selfish concerns. We choose not to hug tight our anger, our pain, our violence. Instead, we look beyond ourselves, learn from God, have the attributes, and then choose to forgive others. As Christians, we must realize that God looks into our hearts, that God will 
as we pray God will do in the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgiveness is an attribute of God. It is not normal human attribute because it means thinking of others before ourselves. Yet we are called to strive to be forgiving. With God's help, all things are possible. Brothers and sisters, we can start right now to pray and to walk in this path of forgiveness. Choose to go beyond ourselves, not to hug tight, not to be selfish, and then follow Jesus, going beyond ourselves, reaching out to others by loving, by serving, and also by forgiving. Please rise. We profess our faith to God as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us humbly pray to the Father that having been forgiven, we in turn must forgive our brothers and sisters from our hearts. Full of trust we pray, Father, come to help of your people. Father, come to the help of your people. May the church, holy yet embracing sinners, always pursue the path of penance and renewal, we pray. Father, come to the help of your people. May government and military leaders seek the first way of dialogue instead of armed confrontation so that our people may live and work in an atmosphere of love and peace, we pray. Father, come to the help of your people. May the families of the victims of extrajudicial killings, kidnapping, terrorism, and sexual abuse obtain strength to reveal their lives and find people who can help them trust in human goodness again, we pray. Father, come to the help of your people. May all catechists be true witnesses to the gospel and be ministered to the youth by reflecting in their words and actions God's love and mercy, we pray. Father, come to the help of your people. May our departed brothers and sisters be welcomed into the kingdom of eternal life, we pray. Father, come to the help of your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions, we pray. Father, come to the help of your people. Look upon our wounded selves, Lord. Change our hearts of stone to hearts filled with love. Renew our afflicted spirit with your peace. You will live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are, are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the forgiveness of do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Honesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Full of trust in God's goodness and mercy, we now Pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, I pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I live you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to the sign of peace. Peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Here is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the Lamb's Supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects are not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I want you to just bow your heads, close your eyes, pray for God's blessings. As we close our eyes, we recall the many blessings we received from the Lord. The abundance of His blessings. We recall how good God was, is, and will be always to us. We recall now how we are so blessed by the Lord. Food on our table, roof over our heads, clothes on our bodies, health, job, relationships, so many others. Count your blessings. Give thanks to God for He is good. His mercy, His love endures forever. After thanking the Lord, let us now bring to Him our wounded heart, the pains in our hurt, in our heart, the many hurts we receive from others, especially those who have been offended or oppressed, abused by others. Verbally abused, physically abused, or even with a gossip maligning us, hurting our reputation, or the ways they deal with us. Sometimes they are inhuman and we are in pain. And we are hurt. I want you to bring your hurts and pains to the Lord. Bring also the persons who hurt you. Do not hug tight. Do not be selfish. Do not keep it to yourself. Surrender to the Lord all the hurts and pains. And then ask the Lord the grace. We can look beyond ourselves. Look beyond your hurts and pains. Look beyond yourself and see the other persons who are also in need of mercy, of forgiveness, of healing. As you bring those persons to the Lord, look at their faces right now. Recall how they hurt you. And despite the hurts and pains, they caused you. As you learn to look beyond yourself. And first look to God and the way you experience His love and mercy. Now we can choose to forgive those persons. And we say, in the name of Jesus, I decide to forgive mention the names of those persons who hurt you looking up to God the way he cared for you loved you forgive you now it's our turn to look beyond ourselves look to the other person and decide to forgive those persons.
You can do it several times right now. You can repeat. Not only once, you have to twice or thrice. You have to repeat that prayer. In the name of Jesus. With your grace. With your power. With the power of the Holy Spirit. I choose to forgive right now. I choose to release that person from my anger, my resentment. I choose to release that person as I forgive that person right now. I choose to bless that person as I receive your blessing right now. As you do that, many of you would experience light or lightness. As you forgive those persons and release them, you are also being released from being imprisoned to your anger and resentment. You feel light and you feel being released also. The more you forgive others, the more you release others from your anger and resentment, the more you are also released. So you can do it often. Do it often. Not only today, not only now. If you have time in your quiet moments, do the same process. After you release them, I want you to bless them with the blessing of the Father, of Jesus, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to bless them with healing, with repentance, with faith, with love of, of God, with wholeness. As you yourself right now experience being made whole, healed, released, forgiven. We thank again the Lord for all this process for helping us to choose the path of forgiveness. Going beyond ourselves. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Almighty spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the love and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.